Hello, I'm Sandy Chin, Associate Director of Leadership Circle. Welcome to this special afternoon event with CRB Classical 99.5. We're so glad to have all of you here. This afternoon's exclusive CRB event includes the opportunity to learn more from three popular CRB Classical 99.5 hosts, Kathy Fuller, Chris Voss, and Brian McCreef. You'll gain access to virtually experience what a day in the life of a CRB host entails and witness what goes into making a live in-studio radio broadcast. And in just a few minutes, our talented hosts will also elaborate on behind the scene details that bring you the classical music with Chris Voss broadcast, so get ready. But before we start, I want to orient you to our Zoom webinar platform. Right now you are not on video and you are all automatically muted, but we do want to hear from you. So during the course of this virtual event, the best way to communicate with us is by posing your questions in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Open the Q&A tab, indicate your name, the town you are tuning in from, and pose your question. We'll get to as many of your questions as we can this afternoon. And if you see a question you want to hear the answer to, you can vote for it by clicking the thumbs up icon next to the question. The questions with the most votes will rise to the top of the queue. And in addition, many of you submitted questions when you registered that we will also integrate into our conversation. We also have a new auto close captioning feature this afternoon that you can use. So to turn that on, uh, turn on the closed captioning feature by clicking the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. Two transcription display options will pop up. We recommend that you select subtitle to enable captioning at the bottom of your screen. You can also select full transcript and a sidebar window will open where you can see what each speaker is saying. Please bear in mind that closed captioning might be slightly delayed. But now that we've covered all the technical basics, let's get started. So over the next hour, as I mentioned, we will provide you with the behind the scenes look at the inner workings of CRB studio, uh, radio studios. Though the, major, uh, though the majority of GBH employees have been working remotely, CRB on-air staff are essential employees who continue to work in our radio studio and keep our 24 hour classical radio station on air. And so first I'd like to welcome my colleague, Brian McCreef into our virtual studio. Brian is Director of Production at CRB, and he will be moderating our discussion with Kathy Fuller and Chris Ross. Brian joined the classical music production staff of GBH in 2004. He produces CRB's Boston Symphony Orchestra broadcast, produces and hosts the Bach Hour radio series, and he supervises all digital content production for classicalwcrb.org. In addition, Brian produces and hosts live concert broadcasts presented by the Handel and Haydn Society, Rockport Music, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, and many others. Brian has a degree in trumpet performance from the New England Conservatory and the College of Worcester. Please join me in welcoming Brian to the virtual stage. Thanks, Sandy. It's great to be here with all of you today. And uh, you know, you read uh, in various media outlets, magazines, newspapers, maybe hear about it on TV. You hear about those people that you're looking forward to seeing when we get to go back into the office. And I just wanna say Sandy is one of those people for me. I wow. always love seeing Sandy at the building and, and I haven't seen her in person in uh, coming up on a year now. So uh, Sandy, thanks for, um, thanks for the lovely introduction. Um, Feelings mutual, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may be able to tell this is not a radio studio. I am actually not one of those people that goes to the to the studio every day. My job, as you heard uh, Sandy detail, it really involves mostly production. I do a little bit of on-air work, but it's not usually uh, live in the studio as our two featured guests do uh, today. That's Chris Voss and Kathy Fuller. So. Um, I also want to reiterate what Sandy just mentioned that I, I can talk forever with both of these folks. I love them both. They're great at their jobs and I always learn from them. Uh, but what I really want to do is hear what your questions are for Chris and Kathy. Um, you know, we make, we kind of joke sometimes in radio, like there's nothing like seeing radio. Uh, and actually that's kind of true in a way um, because you listen to the radio, maybe in your car or at home, or you stream us on our app, whatever. Um, and it's all audio. And there actually is a little bit of fascination, I think, for some people to see what goes on behind the scenes. So feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A 
and we'll get to as many of them as we can and, and just make me irrelevant in this whole conversation. I would, nothing would please me more. But uh, as we get started, I wanna introduce my colleague, Kathy Fuller. Um, Kathy has been a pianist forever. I don't know, she can tell you when she actually started to play the piano, but one of the really big highlights for Kathy early on was winning the Boston Symphony Orchestra Concerto Competition at the age of 15. And I believe that resulted in a performance with the Pops on stage at Symphony Hall. Kathy also taught piano at UMass Lowell and at Clark University in the Langis School. She continues to teach privately and she is on the air every weekday uh, from three, from, sorry, from uh, 10 o'clock until three o'clock with uh, CRB. Kathy got her start in radio at WICN in Worcester and came to GBH at the time in uh, 2000 and then came with, uh, along with me over to CRB when CRB became a part of GBH. So uh, Kathy, it's great to see you and uh, yet another person that I look forward to seeing you much more in person when we can get our lives back to normal, right? How That's you doing? right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the for the introduction. I liked your introduction. It, it made me think of you just walking through the halls playing your trumpet everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> one doesn't reason, happen very often, but it's been known to happen. <laughs> I can tell you that when I, I won that young artist competition, I, it was with uh, Harry Ellis Dixon was the conductor. It was with the oh, BSO. Yeah. And, but when, when they had us audition, um, my mom was the, um, my pianist, the, the, she was playing the orchestra part of the Schumann Concerto. Yeah. And somehow before I was asked to go out on stage and play, they separated like the moms from the kids. And so when I got out onto the stage, she wasn't there. And, and, you know, you're out on symphony hall stage and it's all black and you know that there are judges somewhere. It was like being in hell. And, and, and I, I realized I didn't have my accompanist with me. And so what do I say? I, I'll never forgive myself for it. I, I walked out on stage. I looked around, I looked up at the judges and I said, where's my mother? And, and I felt like such a fool that I, that I played like, mad and, yeah. and won it because I think I was I felt so stupid and I, I thought no they they will not think of me as a little child so oh uh, there you go anyway. you connected to the passion of Schumann in that moment Kathy. that's right that's, that's right that's well one right. of the things that we want to do today Kathy um, is aside from simply talk about the craft and, and the way that you and Chris do your jobs um, we want to talk specifically just to start with um, how things have been organized in such a way to keep you and Chris and the entire staff safe one of the ways that things stay safe is that I'm not there at all, um, <laughs> except for a few moments when I come in every once in a while to record something or to do a, um, a live stream in Fraser. But um, there's a really, really well thought out set of protocols that keeps everyone who's going to the, uh, to the studio on a regular basis safe. And I wonder if you can just kind of walk us through some of that just so um, our, our participants today can really get a handle on um, how it is that, that we're approaching the, the difficulties of these times. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's very much what I'm sure many people are going through all the time. I mean, when we come in, we have to fill out a form that says that we are well and haven't been in contact with anyone who isn't well, um, get through the door. And, and it's a little bit like the supermarket. You know, when we leave the studio, we need to turn right. And so that the GBHers on the other side, the news people uh, turn left. And so we sort of bump into each other as infrequently as possible. Um, then what I let Chris know that I'm, or he lets me know that he's here. I let Laura know that I'm there through the Laura window. Laura Carlo, she, right, our morning yep, host. Laura yep. Carlo. And so she um, sprays the whole console down and, and, and we clean up after one another. And then we yell at each other across <laughs> over six feet and she would leave and I, I go in uh, we let the room air a bit and then I I have I have my everybody has their own little uh, windscreen this is called to keep our peas from popping on the air and you'll see Chris is using one so this is mine and and so I'll put mine on the microphone so that my breath is it, it contains my breath and no one else's um, and and then from there it, it's it really does feel very safe here and 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 people look out for us very very well but it's it's a little bit like one of those abandoned spaceships that you see on like Star Trek you know you kind of <laughs> wish more people would would pass by and say hello but yeah yeah that will come. I, I, I know and and those times that I have been in the studio it, it is uh it's always such a 
such a sort of tension when you see your your colleagues that you want to just uh, embrace and, and say hello to and yet you do have to stand that six feet back and yep. and uh, wear your mask all the time so that's right um, but it has worked it has worked and and um there's been uh, a lot of success with the safety protocols now kathy um we are going to go, as you know, to Chris in the studio. We're going to be able to see Chris in the studio. And for all the participants here, what's going to be really fun is that later on in our hour today, you'll you'll actually be able to sit there with Chris as he talks on the radio live. It'll be a really cool moment. Yeah, and we can bother him. We'll learn more about this. We can make faces. <laughs> we can kind of distract him. Uh, <laughs> not that we ever do that. We never do no, that at the Boston. But <laughs> Boston doesn't do stuff like that. <laughs> But Kathy, um, you're not in a studio right now. No, um, no. You clearly are in a space that uh, has a lot of things on shelves. And so uh, yes. I just wonder if you can you can orient for our audience where you are and, and the, the importance of the room that you're sitting in right now. Uh, yeah, I, I, Brian, I, I sort of think of it as, as, as the realm of the three-dimensional now because everything <laughs> is so digital and radio is so ephemeral. Yeah. But, but this is our... our um, CD library. Also behind me, you see there are LPs. Some of them are very precious. You know, there's a lot of LPs that never got digitized. So we, they never went to CD. So sometimes you have to go from LP uh, and digitize it. But these, this is where uh, CDs have been living here for, for decades. And there's literally tens of thousands of them. And you can fit a lot because we've got these great host squishers. <laughs> you have to be careful not to get stuck between uh, two of these things. But um, but there, there are just tons and tons. There's not only music, there's also a, a great library of information. Like I know that you know these. There are literally, I think, yeah. two and a half, three entire, you know, 10 foot bookcases of these. This is uh, programs from the Boston Symphony. This is from 1910 to 1911. And yeah, so you can, yeah. there, we, we've got them all and they're, and they're amazing. And also great reference material, some of which hasn't made it into the digital realm, Think, things like this. This has has made it, but um, there's a lot living and breathing in here and, and the LPs smell good and it is a good place to be. There's a lot that you can find out. <laughs> Gunther Schuller, a great composer, wrote a big book um, about conducting and he spent years in here researching for that. Yeah, so yeah. it is a very special place. Yeah, no, there's all kinds of wonderful treasures in there. And you're right that when, uh, uh, some of our participants will know that we moved to the building where you are right now from Western Avenue in, uh, in Austin. And, uh, and when that happened, I remember that process of deciding which LPs to bring along because we knew we weren't going to use them very much, but we hard. knew also that we had to bring some of them along because, yep. boy, in, especially in, in, our, in our format in classical music, some of those performances that you can't find elsewhere except on LP are just so incredible. And we wanted to make sure that they came along with us not just for sentimental reasons, but to occasionally even get them out and use them uh, yeah. maybe on the radio or in other productions. Um, yeah. Well, uh, Kathy, uh, th that's just one of the spaces. And very quickly, before we start taking some questions from the audience, um, uh, describe the, the hallway there. You mentioned that you turn right right while the news team turns left and that's way, a way of staying safe, but it's also very exciting. I've always felt that uh, the news crew from GBH is right there with us in the same hallway. And, and again, getting back to that idea of encountering people at work in a way that oh, we're yeah. not right now. Oh, Boy, yeah. am I going to be happy to see Joe Matthew walking at me down I the hallway. I know. And you know what? You know, one thing I, I, I really miss, and I'm sure it will happen again, news people, they are heroes. And, yeah, and think yeah. of the stress that they're under. And periodically through the day, it used to be that some news person would just sort of open the door, close the door, and sort of go, oh. <laughs> Can I just stand here for a minute? Yeah, you know? yeah. Because the, the beauty of the music, they just needed to be sort of have it wash over them for a few minutes and then get yeah. back to the stress of their jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's a little encapsulation of what I think people use the radio for very often. This music is, is so full of, the message is so positive yeah. that we have such stuff in us as humans yeah. and that we can be... Uh, thinking that far ahead and thinking of, of such a harmonic life, even in disharmony, yeah. that yeah. that it's it's a solace. And yes. so I, I miss that. I miss I miss the news guys coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget a, a particular moment in the hallway when uh, when Adam Riley, one of our fantastic reporters and commentators, uh, just saw me coming and said, 
oh, I love that little thing I heard on the Bach Hour. And it's just like, what? You listen to the Bach? I'm so flattered. You know, it's, it's, it, it is really a joy to have those people around and to be able to encounter them as well. And they That's are right. just literally right across the hallway from where you are right now. But yeah. as I said before, what I am most interested in is the questions and thoughts of our participants today. So Sandy, um, you're right there with hey, some Sandy. of those questions. And, and I wonder if uh, what you have for Kathy from some of, the, some of our guests today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing me back to this behind the scenes studio. I can certainly listen to both of you all the time. Um, I'm, ex I'm excited to ask some of our questions from our audience as they were submitted earlier and as I'm seeing them here um, as they come up. So this is fantastic. Um, I'm just going to ask um, one from David Williams from Bedford. He asked, um, how do you play your media? And this is going back to um, kind of what you how you describe the library there. Uh, Kathy, CD streaming, are you still using, you know, some of those records and tape? And I actually have a follow-up question. Um, is that room temperature controlled? Yeah, yeah, and, and also at the end of the hall is our Fraser Performance Studio where the live events uh, happen and will happen again. And of course that's humidity controlled for the, for the two Steinways that are in there and, and temperature controlled. Um, everything is cold. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed even more than ever, it's sort of a wind because we have such special filtration going on right now. So things are even colder than ever. But as far as digital streaming, um, yes, um, we have this amazing team. Our, our, um, our program director, Ronnie Schloss, is, is brilliant. She looks at a computer and it just, its tongue falls out and it does whatever she says. And um, it, they rip the music that we're going to be playing on the air. It's called ripping um, from a physical CD into what's called the audio vault. You'll see that with Chris. That's where that's where our digital music comes from. And we we press a button, and the digitized version of that piece uh, is broadcast. I love the word broadcast, by the way. It's it's a farm term. It means casting the seeds broadly. Mm. You know, that's what they do. They broadcast, and and so that's what we do. But yeah, it's all digital and, and streaming. We do occasionally need to use a CD every now and then. Um, uh, if something is just new and we want to get it on the air, we haven't ripped it in yet. Or if the audio vault decides that it's going to take a lunch break. And that, that's rare, but occasionally <laughs> it does. And so in that case, uh, we'll need to go to our CD players. We have three of them at the ready. The poor things, they, they, they're not often used. But, um, but we are, for the most part, broadcasting digital versions of the music. Yeah. I bet we'll see a little bit of what you just mm -hmm. said when we get to Chris, I bet, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And He's Sandy, in his man another, cave. The, the other way of, uh, <laughs> that's right. The other way of looking at that question, Sandy, is how, how people receive us, not just how we kind of get Absolutely. out there. And, and that's, that's a nice uh, 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 opportunity maybe to just mention that we do stream our station on the internet uh, through our website and through mm -hmm. a lot of other services, but most especially um, through our CRB app, app, which is available for um, smartphones, both uh, iPhone and Android phones. And that's in the app store. You just have to search for WCRB and it'll come right up. People can take and, you um, wherever, and, whenever. <laughs> take us wherever we go. And, uh, and then we also, you can find all of this. There's a, there's a web page that we have that, that describes all the ways to listen. And it literally is uh, classicalwcrb.org slash listen we'll put that in the chat right. everyone yes i think we'd love to share and we, that. we know that people are listening from all over the place because now with social media it's nice you know to to introduce a piece of music and and to say you know i, I i've got something else about it that I, I want you to know about and then tweet that and people will say hi i'm in england and i'm you know i'm listening and you know right happy to say hi yeah, so yeah. there's this kind of in, sort of constant communication that's going on and and we know that people are using the streaming a lot yeah. we have another question david uh galen um so this is tied into kind of what you said about all this programming is ready for you too um how many days or weeks or maybe even months in advance do you plan in advance um and uh, you know, I, I know it's a team effort for all of you too. So it's a, for three hours worth of programming, let's say, you know, how much in advance does that require? Uh, Abby, I think, well, I could tell you one thing. It's 
the the team who is is working together we all have some input into what goes on the air but the team that that we work with here is uh incredible and they you know by the time the a program is fully put together we have lots of time to look at it and figure out okay how do you know how can i connect these two pieces or what you know at, at this time of day at noon time what what might people be doing i can never always get it right but you can have a sense that maybe at lunchtime you know maybe the pastoral symphony which by the way millions of people have never heard before. And that's something that, that we think a lot about is the fact that you don't know how often we hear, I've never heard Beethoven seventh before, or my child in the back seat, strapped in, forced to listen to classical music, <laughs> was so in love with that piece, you know? Um, and we always need to remember that there are people who don't know this music at all. Um, so, but we, we have lots of lead time to really kind of figure out how we want the show to roll. And that's, that's very helpful. And I know that what, uh, something that you think about is always, how do you bring on new listeners? You know, what are those pieces that will, will get that new listener on, um, you yeah. know, tuning in? So, and I, I do love that part of that intent of what you do in your programming for sure. Yeah. And, and, and the, you know, it's my job just to stay out of the way. I mean, I, I don't want to get in anybody's way of, of experiencing this music. I'm just sort of, I think of myself as as, as an invitation. I, it, I feel so honored to be sitting in your car with you or maybe at work with you. And, and um, you can trust us to, to bring you a vast amount of, of a very wide range of music. It's an ocean of music really, right? Um, but but it, 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 for me, it's just, to invite you to out of my sheer passion for it and to hope that you enjoy it and to get the heck out of your way. So you can. <laughs> well, you know, Kathy, you know, you, you, you've talked before to me and I, I, I mean, you know, as, as the astute listener uh, will, will remember from Sandy's introduction, I came to GBH after you did and I learned so much from you as I got my start, but you've talked oh, so often nice. about those red chairs that are in the studio. Oh yeah, and, the red and, chairs. Uh, and the way that that helps you to do exactly what you're talking about right now. We'll see those red chairs in just a few minutes with Chris. That's right. But, uh, but describe what those chairs mean to you as an on-air host, Kathy. Well, that was um, the, the guy who's in charge of everything, uh, Tony Rudell, who, who first mentioned that. <laughs> Somebody just decided to put these two Ikea chairs into the studio. They look great, um, they're red. And when you're on the air, you're staring at them. And so he was saying, you know, imagine there's a musicologist in one and, and God knows this is the musicology capital of the world, right? There's so <laughs> many great writers on music and experts and this Boston is, is a hub. There's a musicologist in one and then in the other, you know, somebody that you bumped into on the street who knows nothing about classical music. So, so could you please talk to them both and, 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 and make them both mm -hmm. happy, you know, go, thanks, <laughs> sure. But it's, it's a hard challenge, but it's actually a wonderful way to think of things because there is some of everything. You're always only talking to one person. So you think of yourself as being really close to the person you're talking to, but you, you need to remember that there's somebody in both of those chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, and, and and, and you're literally speaking, I mean, when you say talk to both of them, not separately, <laughs> you can only, you're talking right. to that, that right. th those people together and- and Because uh, those chairs are side by side, aren't they? They <laughs> are. Yeah, that's right, that's right. A couple of drinks on the table in the middle. <laughs> right, but, right, right. But yeah. you don't, yeah, you don't want to, you just want to say things, say what will resonate. Um, but as I say, it's very nice less is more, but it's nice to be able to put more onto our website as Brian, you, you oversee see that. And there is such depth on the website, interviews, articles, you know, things that we really want to capture your attention with. You can't imagine as a host, I mean, back in the day, you know, in the days of Robert J. Lertzema, who worked here um, mm -hmm. for so long on, on the old WGBH, he used to give the number of the recording, like Phillips, seven, yeah, three, right. two, four, <laughs> six, nine, because there was nowhere else to go to get it. But now it comes up on your on your screen, on your on your car, car and rate. you can just quickly head over to your computer and find out more. So that's nice, right. nice, nice, nice. Right, right, right. Well, um, the time has come, and and we in radio are are very much 
much about when the time comes. It's all about the clock for us <laughs> to have Chris Voss join us. Um, Chris came to CRB in 2015. He had uh, gotten a degree in voice from the University of Georgia. And previous to that, his undergrad was at Allegheny College, very fine liberal arts college in Pennsylvania. And, uh, and Chris came along and uh, does that rarest of things. Uh, uh, he actually walked into radio for the very first time with a major shift on a major station, a major market station. That's kind of unheard of, but it has, uh, it's, it's for very good reasons. Chris is one of the most naturally talented people in this work that I've ever run across. And so uh, Chris, it's great to have you with us um, in your moments here that you're, I know you're looking at that clock, which is set by the atomic clock in Colorado. And so you're absolutely 100% precise there, but mm -hmm. uh, you're on the air from three until eight. And uh, you also do some of our great, uh, along with Kathy, some of our great uh, in concert productions and digital content as well. Well, so uh, tell us how things are going in the studio today, Chris. Going well. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Welcome to WCRB, the little the little box that could. Um, <laughs> it's it's nice to have everyone along. Uh, yeah, we're here in we're here in studio, and things are going along. As he mentioned, I'm. Can you hear me all right? You can hear me all right. Yes. Yes, you're great. Yeah, yep. Um, uh, yeah, just keeping an eye on the clock, make sure the, the music doesn't run out for everyone listening along on the radio. <laughs> what's, the, what's the music that's on the air right now, Chris? Gershwin's An American in Paris. So if you're missing nice. traveling at all, that's a piece for you. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, Chris, I, I, I'm sort of, I, I sort of teased with this little introduction of you, uh, but, but I think that one of the things that's always fascinating uh, is to find out how people found their way into this. It's, you know, you know, I, I work uh, on a regular basis in normal times anyway with Ron Della Chiesa, who is one of those amazing people who started doing radio. Like, so he, he was like three years old when he started pretending he had a microphone in front of his mouth. You know, I mean, he's, he's been a radio guy from the very beginning. Myself, I wasn't sort of like thinking about radio for a long time. How about you? When did, when did radio become a thing that seemed like a path to pursue for you? Yeah, so I mean, growing up in the Boston area, radio is has been part of my life forever. I mean, we have such great radio atmosphere here in the city. Um, so I grew up listening to CRB and GBH when they were separate stations and all the different um, news stations and radio music stations. And I, I loved radio, but it wasn't something that I thought I was gonna do as a career. I uh, I went into um, music as a, as a singer, as you mentioned. Um, and after finishing my master's in vocal performance, sort of had the, the realization that that wasn't really the life for me. It was, um, now contrary to the fact life. that I am alone in a room right now, um, <laughs> it was a lot of time spending, spent alone in a room practicing, and it was uh, a lot of time on the road and a really, really, really hard life that just sort of didn't jive with my sort of homebody kind of vibe so um so i left that behind but then i saw, thought oh my goodness <laughs> i have two degrees in music what am i going to do with this and um my dad was tired of me moping around at home and he <laughs> said uh well i've seen that gbh does tours at the station why don't you go see if you can't be a tour guide there and maybe you can get into radio somehow and i thought okay fine so I got here in September of 2014 um, as a tour guide. And then as luck would have it, the, the woman who was in my position before me, she left. And um, there was a position open and people were very kind to pass along my resume. And from September to February, I was full-time on the air um, doing what I do now. And that was six years yes. ago. So. Indeed. Just crazy. Indeed. I I didn't know anything about radio to such a degree that I didn't know that that was not a thing that happened. I just sort of thought that is what happened. I had no <laughs> idea. 25, I had no idea. But And, uh, and Chris, um, Chris, when did you learn that the most important thing to know about radio is exactly what Kathy's coffee order from Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a way to make sure that she would stick around in the room with me so we could have a conversation. <laughs> get her a big coffee and, uh, so you, you yeah. bribe someone for your education yeah. is what you're saying a hundred percent if you're okay. gonna be the best you should bring them beverages <laughs> got it got it okay um well <laughs> there's a little background from chris voss and um listen i in just a little while maybe about 10 minutes or so um we're actually going to sort of set this up so that we watch you 
in, in sort of a fishbowl style, and you're going to yep. do a radio break for us as we Absolutely. observe it happen. But mm -hmm. um, before that happens, I, would I want to bring Sandy back in with us, um, because I, as I said at the very beginning, um, I, I can talk to you guys all day. And frankly, I have talked to you all day at certain times in the past. But I'm most interested in what our participants are wondering and their thoughts about your work. So Sandy, um, thanks for coming back to the virtual studio here. And, and, and what, what do you have for Chris for us? I'm so glad to be back, but I do want to know how do I get on that Dunkin' Donuts list? <laughs> uh, how do I? I don't live too far from the station, so I'm sure we could arrange something. It's a secret go. handshake. Secret handshake. <laughs> Safely, it's the elbow. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, we have a question from Harriet Root. She's from Westboro. Um, she submitted this earlier. Um, during uh, your time at CRB, what has surprised you most about hosting a radio programming uh, program? And what is important to keep in mind to have that be successful? Chris, maybe that most surprising thing was 25, you, what do you yeah, mean? I mean? It does happen. His very <laughs> presence at a radio station is the biggest surprise to Chris. I'm putting words in your mouth. Go ahead, Chris. Is, uh, is, is staggering. Um, that is a good question. What's the most surprising thing about, you know, you, you, you are in a room ostensibly by yourself. This is the most people I've seen in a year. Um, <laughs> and so there is that real difficulty of having to be able to picture in your mind that you are talking to someone and talking to them like a real human being and not presenting to them in this sort of grand state. Because when you're on stage in front of people like I was when I was singing, it's a whole different experience than having a one-to-one -one conversation. I think we're all getting a lot better at this now because of Zoom and that kind of stuff. We're actually all sort of getting this experience of having to talk to people in sort of a, a weird situation. But um, that was that was really hard. It took me, I think, five years to even get the hang of it to the point where now I have the feeling of when I when I turn the microphone on and um, and am presenting whatever I'm presenting that I do have that that feeling of I am talking to someone. Um, and it's a weird mental gymnastics to put yourself through to, to get there, uh, but kind of fun. And, and you know what, when you figure it out, it makes voicemails really, really <laughs> easy to do. <laughs> it's the best. I think HR needs to tap you for that, Chris. <laughs> but Chris, you're not in the room alone, I hear. I hear there are two red chairs oh, that, yeah. uh, that Kathy yeah. talked about. So maybe... Would you can like we, the red can chairs? Can we take a look at, do we have time for that? And maybe we yeah, can visually got, see people sitting in those. I've got eight minutes seats. until the okay. music runs out. So, um, yeah, I will just- Give, us a, little, give can, us a little guided tour here, Chris. Yeah, actually, we'll start here. This is where a lot of the magic happens. This is the board. It's got a lot of different channels on it, uh, sources, but we, we only use like two or three of them, depending. There's the microphone button that I use for the microphone. Um, Your personalized individual microphones, right? Or, or at least the, or the cover. The microphone sock is our own, yeah. Um, the windscreen. I don't think it's called a microphone sock. Um, then there's the, it's okay. Uh, you can call it a microphone sock. Yeah. Uh, sock there, Chris. And then there is the um, uh, what I like to call the play button, which just plays the music. You hit play and it plays. And if you hit it again, it plays the next beat. Um, and then there's a button that allows us to bring in sounders. Um, I don't know if you talked about the sounders before, but these are sort of like break pieces that we uh, use to break things up. So if I'm going to talk about the Red Sox, for example, um, and then going to go into a piece of music in order to switch the mood a little bit, I can use some sound and uh, something like this. I don't know if you can hear that. It's something like that. Uh, and there's a little touch screen that allows us to do that. Um, and uh, and then otherwise, you know, there's a computer for Wikipediaing and stuff. Or you know, uh, <laughs> no, actually, I have my playlist up here. It's how I make sure that everything stays and looks right on the on the website. And then the two red chairs. So the studio is quite small, but there are these two lovely. I don't know if you can see them. We can. There they can. are. There they are. Yeah. Fantastic. So Kathy, Ooh. which one's the uh, the, the audience? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They I switch they off. To, they, I was going to say, they, they trade places to try to confuse Kathy. They never right. succeed, though. She's always right on top of it. And Chris, I think um, 
just just give a little uh, point back there to where the where the music actually where you can see what's coming up the the uh, audio vault screen. Oh, here. Yeah. yeah. So I think with the way that the lighting is, it's going to be a little hard to see, but I'll try my best. It's a little yeah. distant, but that's okay. Yeah. There's a screen here, um, which has a countdown on it, and which has everything that we're going to play for the entire day listed on it. So that is all the music, all the development spots we call them. So things from, you know, becoming a, a, a Ralph Lowell Society member or becoming a sustainer to the station, encouraging you to do that, which I'm going to encourage you to do if you're not doing that already, um, <laughs> because that's how we stay afloat. Um, there are uh, underwriting spots, uh, people who buy sponsorship, essentially, um, and support the station that way. And then um, what we call image spots, again, ways of setting the mood and setting a sense of place throughout the day. So regardless of who is on the air, there's always a, a sense of the entire station throughout the day that invites you, know, you to listen at different times or get a different or use the station in, in multiple different ways. All of that is in the vault ahead of time. It gets loaded in the day before. And so then when we come into the studio, we can just get, well, Laura has to do some finagling to make sure it gets all right when she's here in the morning, 5 a.m. Um, and then from there on out, we just, uh, hit play and it just runs smoothly. I need to find some some wood here to knock. <laughs> Everything runs smoothly and nothing goes wrong. Yeah. Chris, we have a question from Marjorie um, and I think this plays right into here. She asks, what do you do in the studio when the music is playing? I know you're not always talking to us, but what would you typically be doing when the music is playing? I mean, listening, figuring out what's coming up next, um, not figuring it out, but like thinking about what I'm gonna say. Um, I've got uh, several features throughout the afternoon as well. So making sure that I've got a good trivia question lined up. Uh, oh, yes. Sometimes I'm working on other things like the in-concert broadcasts that uh, we do on the weekends um, and, uh, or, you know, just sitting here and enjoying the music. I mean, uh, it's, it's not the worst gig in the world to listen to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It is not so well. I always find, Chris, that uh, when I've been on the air in, in the live settings like you are, um, that, that there are times when I might have prepared, you know, way ahead of time what, what I think a show is going to go like, but then there's a particular recording that, that it just, just strikes me in a certain way on that day and it changes what I'm going to say, uh, as, a, as we end that music. Do you, is, there, is there a recording that kind of hit you at one point that way that you can think of? And I'm going to jump in here. Victoria, yeah. I think, is, is asking that same kind of same question. Do you have a script to follow? What are, you know, talking points? And, um, and she's coming from Kensington, Maryland. Hey. Hi, Victoria. Wow, <laughs> Hi, Victoria. wow. Yeah. that's great. Um, no, there isn't a script to follow uh, to answer Victoria's um, question. That's the job, is to figure out how all this music relates to itself and relates to anything else coming up and being here to present it to you so that, um, you know, here's one piece and here's another piece. And we sort of move along uh, the afternoon or the morning or the midday or the evening uh, uh, like that. And by um, the way, Chris, just right now, how's your countdown clock look? Three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, good. I'm good, I'm good. Um, uh, but the, um, in terms of a, a recording, yeah, every now and again, something strikes you. Like, you know what this it happens with me the most? Now, I don't know. Kathy definitely has other examples. But with me, it happens with Vivaldi's Four Seasons, where sometimes wow. you'll get a Four Seasons recording and you're like, it sounds like these people have just invented this music right in front of them. It is so, 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 so vibrant and, and alive and, 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 and new sounding. It's so cool. Um, and that is an example i just think like every time there's a cool version of of winter from vivaldi's four seasons which has that sort of like achiness to it it's very very sort of gets me and 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 i get very excited about it um things like that so but no there is no script it's just and kathy knows this too it's just sort of us being ourselves as as much as as much as possible and well, i've got two minutes now so i am and, if you don't mind oh yes yes i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna say in these next two minutes <laughs> please do please do <laughs> i know what i'm gonna say but make sure that it's right and then um but i'm gonna leave my i'll leave my microphone on so you guys are gonna follow along here a little bit if that's cool. that would be that would we be great that. Uh, great Maybe. absolutely 
Maybe we can ask one more question before we hear Chris. I feel like we're a fly on the wall in that little studio that <laughs> in a minute or so. Yeah, um, good. Kathy, we, uh, we have a question from Chris Santos. Um, she asks, uh, are you still playing piano? And what do you consider your favorite piece uh, to play? And, and is that written by one of your favorite composers too? Oh, that's always hard. I think the stock answer you're supposed to give about favorite pieces is that whatever you're working on at the moment is your favorite piece, you know, but, <laughs> but that's very, very nice of you to ask. I mean, I, I play a little bit. There was a recital I was going to be giving in Rhode Island last year that got canceled because mm. of the pandemic. I'm hoping that comes back, but um, I'm married to a, a, a world-class pianist, and so I sort of uh, live vicariously through him. But I, I do have a deep love of playing Beethoven and also playing French composers. Re Ravel and Debussy particularly are, mean a lot to me. But then there's Chopin. Oh, and then there's Schumann. Oh, and then there's <laughs> Bach, you know. So, um, but Beethoven does have a special place uh, for me, but thank you for asking that. That's very kind of you. I think that, um, and, and I'll just do a little pitch here for Kathy's uh, way of talking to other pianists. There's a really lovely feature right now on our website. I think I just also want to be mindful of Chris in the studio there and be able to cut to him when the break comes up here. Uh, he's going to uh, do what we call a back announce, uh, talk about that Gershwin, do some of those things that he was talking about with the audio vault, and then to the next piece of music. So, um, but as stand we're doing by, that- they say, stand by. Oh, uh, let's just, I'll put my question on hold right now and uh, we'll listen to Chris. Gershwin's an American in Paris. They were at the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and Eric Kunzel conducting here on Classical Radio Boston 99.5 WCRB. Very nice to have you along this afternoon and evening. Looking forward to today's 505. We're going to stay at local for that long stretch of music with the Boston Early Music Festival Orchestra playing Bach. And then, as always, a trivia question ahead at 530. Mozart up next. It's 441. RB programs exist because of you and Simmons University now accepting applications for its 16 months. This is underwriting. <laughs> I've, Chris, we, extended priority we wouldn't get this on a tour, on a typical tour in a studio, right? I can't hear you right now, but <laughs> the next thing that's going to play. <laughs> People would be kicked out. <laughs> is an image spot. Classical music is your secret way to relax and unwind. It sets the but space. There can be no secrets between friends. Friend a favor and tell them about 99. Stand by. Today. Pianist Mitsuko Uchida is absolutely incredible. She's one of the great Mozart pianists in particular. And uh, here she is with the English Chamber Orchestra and Jeffrey Tate with Mozart's fifth piano concerto. That's it. All right. Yay, Yay Chris. <laughs> well done. Thank Chris, you. you know, the, the, um, the term standby, I mean, that's what everybody, it's a radio term. It just gets everybody to, to freeze. And, and it, it is so effective that I, I have used it with my children for like years. I'll just <laughs> stand by and then everybody just freezes. It's amazing. In the kitchen, right? You don't mean in the studio, you mean at home. No, I mean at home in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> I might have it to works. try that one. Yeah, you should yeah, try Yeah, Sandy, that. you got some kids at home. Yeah. I actually radio lingo on them. I told them to stand by for an, at least another half hour. <laughs> right. That's good. Well, Sandy, before your next question, I'll just I'll just finish the thought about what Kathy uh, recently posted on our website. It's a conversation with this phenomenal piano named Benjamin Grosvenor. And I think that one of the things I love about it is it's yet another example. I've seen dozens of them over the years where Kathy and her experience as a pianist is able to talk to someone um, about their art who has released this new recording of some of the most ferociously amazing music uh, ever written for piano uh, by Franz Liszt. And, and the, the interview just opens up that world in, in such a way that, uh, that someone only like Kathy can really pull that off. So okay. I, I urge you to check the website for that interview as well. 
Thank you. And I just wanted to say one thing about Mr. Voss. Um, what's neat, it's neat to see him in action. One of the things I think people notice is how he uses his hands. And, and, and that's a big part of, of giving a break is, is having that freedom to do what you normally do. And he's so amazing because when he started, he's the only person I've ever known who said, you know what, I'm, he, he, at home when he was with friends, he actually recorded himself in normal conversation. And in all my years in radio, and there have been many years, I've <laughs> never heard of anybody actually doing that. It's very clever because you just want to kind of match your real self, you know, you, you, because people can hear that. Everybody can hear, you know, your honest self. And um, he did that right away, right at the beginning. He says it took him five years to feel the audience, and and I I disagree. I yeah. think it he, took he, him like he, five minutes. I was going to gonna say good. that's that's that is extreme humility, Chris. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and and your colleagues are just going to have to call you on that one because that's yeah, just, yeah. Uh, it. Might have felt that one way on the inside, but on the outside, you were right there, my man. Yeah, that's yeah. how it feels like today. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned the hands thing. It's like one of the first things. That I, that I noticed we're, we're just going to trade compliments here but like being able to come <laughs> after Kathy and be able to watch how comfortably she is uh here in front of the microphone especially like when we were doing pledge and stuff and the ability with which she just spoke to the other person on the other side and a lot of that was hand gestures and I thought okay let me see if I can incorporate and she said hand gestures hand gestures hand gestures you'll really because before I was like holding on to the board for dear life and <laughs> right. um <laughs> But, you know, you get in here and, and somebody says, okay, now speak normally. And you're like, well, I don't know what that sounds like. I have no idea what it sounds like to speak normally. I know what it sounds like to speak into a microphone, but that's, that may not be the same thing because you have the tendency to put an affect on. Yeah. We all do. It's natural. Yeah. We're protecting ourselves a little bit from, from the fear of having to present to people. So yeah. giving myself a chance to, uh, you know, trick myself into talking normally, um, it worked out. Yeah. It did. I You're bet hired. We, <laughs> I bet if we did this at the start of you joining us, Chris, and comparing it today, it it certainly wouldn't have been five years for sure. <laughs> you know, holding the board versus just being comfortable in your setting. He would have had less of a beard, I think. But um, <laughs> but uh, that's that's a that's a pandemic thing too. Anyway, are there other questions, Sandy? We do. Yes, we have um, Steve Wasserman. He asked if. Is there a funny story about something that might have happened during a live stage performance? And uh, Chris or Kathy, mm -hmm. I know you guys are performers. I, think I know what you're getting at. Steve. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's one of the reasons why I am now in radio. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, and, and it, it's been nice because people have actually told me that they were at this concert, but it was uh, almost 30 years ago when I was playing uh, Mozart C major, the famous C major concerto um, with uh, the Bach Society at Mechanics Hall, which is such a beautiful hall. Um, and it was this big long concert of, of music that's been used in films. And so that, that, that was used in the film um, Elvira Madigan, if you might remember. And I was at the end of the program and there were all these other Queens of the Nights and, and crazy stuff. It was an amazing concert. Um, and I had to be in the green room waiting for the concert, to, for the end of the concert. And they had to move the piano from the side, the beautiful Steinway, uh, from the side into the middle so that I could play this concerto. And um, they didn't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> they, I don't that's, that's quite a, know how they did this, but it, it, they, I don't think they unlocked the wheels and pianos are very heavy and uh, Mechanics Hall has these beautiful sloping stairway on either side of it. And as they were moving it, it got away from them. Maybe it was trying to escape, but it it went tumbling down the stairs. People said it looked like the Titanic going down and, and that the legs snapped off and flew off. The soundboard was, was um, cracked, I think. And, and it just went boom, boom, boom down the stairs. I heard the sound, I thought somebody had died. And there was this incredible mass inhalation. The whole audience went, <gasps> of course this was being broadcast live on the radio on top of that. So um, they, it all ended and somebody screamed out, you idiot, do you know what you've done? And that's on, that's on there too. And they, they didn't have a second piano. So they found this old thing that had been used in one of the bars upstairs. It had like beer on, it was fascinating, <laughs> uh, but it worked and we did it. 
and and I got a lot of applause for being such a trooper, you know. And and one of the best headlines in the newspaper afterwards was, "Concert has crash endo." Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that was the worst thing that could happen. And, and since then, I've enjoyed being in, in that little room with a microphone and, and nothing that can fall, really. <laughs> That's my worst story. There you go. <laughs> I got nothing to top that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you have that the, uh, someday. I should, I should, I should tweet out the. There's a, there's an audio. There's audio of it, which is. Yeah. is I was just going to say that Kathy, being the true radio professional, actually did turn that into a radio story <laughs> yeah. with the audio of that piano what are you coming do? down the stairs, and yeah, right. it's magnificent. From a radio point of view, it's magnificent. Yeah. You live to tell it. <laughs> yep. Well, Chris, maybe you can ask um, this question from Victoria from um, also um, from Maryland. Oh, so live radio seems that it could also entail a number of everyday mishaps yes. in the studio. H have you never once heard a DJ sneeze, for example? <laughs> um, and you may have a little story about that. Chris. I do. I do. I mean, I have a couple of where, like, there's been some real snafus, um, some which probably can't be presented because uh, it was bad. Uh, <laughs> trying to trying to get things to run automatically and hitting the wrong buttons, and the television went on the air, and it was it was a disaster. That was like week one. Um, but no, um, the only the only thing I've had. In, it's funny. I always do wonder. Yeah, you never hear sneezing or that kind of stuff. Maybe in talk radio you would do, but but not with us, but I did have the hiccups uh, a couple of times now. <laughs> and <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it felt like a disaster, a minor disaster, because you didn't know if in the middle of Beethoven, you were gonna go, <gasps> you know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, you work through it. That's one of the things, if you're gonna be live, you might as well be live. And- Proof, uh, proof that there's no script, right? <laughs> I think that's what I said. Hey, if you wondered if we're here or pre-recorded somewhere else, we're here and I have the hiccups and I had them for like an hour. It was yeah. it wasn't like a joke. It was like oh the whole hour, the five o'clock hour was all hiccups and terrible. <laughs> I haven't sneezed yet on the air, but maybe, you know, the, the night is young. Does, I can't remember, Chris, uh, does, does, the, um, does that studio have a cough button? No. Yeah. <laughs> We have this at, uh, at Symphony Hall when we do live broadcasts of the BSO that there's a cough button that, that our host Ron will, will press and it's sort of, it, it's just an automatic mute. It's just his own way of muting the mic. And uh, Ron is so much of a professional that I think I've seen him use that once in the, in the years that I've produced the BSO broadcasts. But, uh, but it is a, a handy little thing to have along. Well, we can just pull the mic down or turn it off. I mean, right. since we're right. our own engineers and, yeah. you know, and, and therein that's lies the problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Wait. Kathy, have you ever sneezed on air? I've never. I've never sneezed on the air. No. No, I, I've lost my voice. You know, you get all ready and you're standing there and you're just ready to go. And then you open your mouth and like a frog comes out. It's like, what just happened? You know, and, and then and then you then you have to pull the mic down and and, and do yeah. something. Or yeah. your brain just sort of gives out and goes, uh, we've got nothing. We've got nothing. <laughs> and uh, then you're like, oh, but I definitely had something to say. You had something. <laughs> Well, Chris, as you're pressing those buttons, we have a question from Helen Waters. Um, she asks, when you're streaming um, a, a piece, mm -hmm. is it as high a quality, audio qual quality, as with a CD? So, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Is. So, I mean, I'm not an audio engineer, so I will uh, immediately defer to people who are, but I know that we are using uh, lossless, um, high, high quality uh, uh, um, every time we're uploading anything into the vault, it's a WAV file. It's not uh, an MP3. Um, not, not that we wouldn't be hard pressed to tell the difference, to be honest, but, mm -hmm. uh, but we're using as high quality as, as we possibly can with everything we do. And that is not just with the CDs that we're ripping into the vault. That's what it's called, you know, uh, ripping into the vault, putting into a digital system, but also uh, Brian knows with the with the BSO broadcasts, um, the live broadcasts, so those are being streamed and recorded at a very high quality, mm. um, higher quality than than I think like what television does, right? I mean, like you're you're doing really, really, really high quality 
uh, recording. So it so takes high up that a you lot can't of even tell the difference. Space. Yeah. What's that? So high that you can't really even tell the difference. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, but just to ensure that, you know, if you ever want to, and I imagine this was, is a reason for me, it's a reason. If you, for whatever reason, need to compress down to a smaller format, you can do that. So from a WAV file down to an MP3 file, you can do that. Our website, for example, requires MP3s. So that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But it's harder to expand up. They right. you can't make it a better quality. Right. So always start with the best and get go lower if you need to. Right, we have a question from Morton Hoffman um, from Norton, Mass. Um, this is an interesting question. With the success of the current audio production of Tiger Style by the Huntington Theater Company and the experience with webinars we have had over the past year, do you foresee a possible resurgence of radio theater as in the pre-TV days? What do you think about that? Wow, that's a great question. Yeah, on, on air or streaming, perhaps? I mean, I, I think I think sure we're never we're never going to get away from this because it's mm. it is convenient if you need it to be convenient it's a drag when it's the only option but it's convenient when I mean right now you get to come into the studio in a way that you've never been able to come into the studio before that's as a result right. of an event like this so that's very cool I think people are starved to be around other people and be in audiences with other people so I don't know if that's an answer to will there be a resurgence in radio drama in some ways there is podcasting is that resurgence yeah. it's a huge huge industry and some really really cool both fiction and non-fiction stuff being done there um but i don't know i don't know if there will be a, a, a digital resurgence in terms of like zoom theater once we're able to be in person theater i don't know i think also sandy that what's what's a little closer to home for us is uh over the last year how much we've done in our fraser studio in streaming performances um, that, that a lot of people have partnered with us on. So the Concord Chamber Music Society has a, a produced a performance in our Fraser studio because there are no live concerts right now. And Boston Baroque has done a lot of them. There was this fantastic production of Handel's Messiah from the Handel and Haydn Society. You know, a, a lot of, of performances have taken place in our, in our Fraser studio. And that's a little bit more in line with our, our radio content and, and those um, you know, uh, I, th I think there's widespread agreement that those are going to continue in one form or another, no matter how the next months and years unfold. I think it's just something that people have learned to do. And it's a it's an experience that people have come to really actually love. I mean, Enjoy. I, I'm, I'm I, I, as much as anybody else, I, I like at the end of the day to not look at a computer screen. But on the other hand, uh, when you can hear a performance and see it happen live and you're you're involved with it but you're you're in your own terms in your own setting um that's kind of a magic that that wasn't fully explored before and it, and it really is now so i think that's a little bit more how things will go for crb in that in that realm that's great um i think we might have time for one more question we have a question, question from azita and i hate saying that <laughs> one last question but we have one from azita from cambridge she says, number one, thank you so much for a great radio station. Um, her question is uh, for Kathy. She often looks up the articles, Kathy, that you mentioned, and today was one on the scream painting um, and the small enigmatic scripts, which uh, was apparently scribed by Munch, um, the painter. How do you, Kathy, select these articles and are and she just says they're always great. So she's oh, that was such a them. great story. Thank you for asking that. Um, and 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 you know, our 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 manager, uh, Tony Rudell, who's in charge of the station and in charge of all music here at, at GBH, encourages us and 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 really wants us to 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 talk to you about the things that that excite us um, like a friend and and I'll tell you finding those things can be tricky sometimes but uh, you know if your Twitter feed has lots of interesting people those things tend to pop up we have a great sort of internal channel through slack the it's called and and we just talk to each other and I think sometimes the best way to find out about some interesting thing is is talking to each other so I count on my friends and, and my colleagues uh, to mention that some such and such a thing happened in this case monk there's a little writing on that on that painting people didn't 
really know about. And it was him himself saying that it took a madman to paint this painting. And they've just proven that it was him that wrote that. But um, it's, it's fun to sort of drop those things in and then to get feedback about it um, as you just did. So, so thank you. I just always look and we're always looking, always listening and, and, and trying to stay curious. You know, Twitter is, is an area that so many people complain about, the toxicity or whatever you want to say about social media, but there's a lot of positive and, and Kathy is definitely one of them because you're right. Kathy tends to, tends to tweet link, links to these articles that are really fun, really cool, and, and just unfold kind of new areas of, that you hadn't been thinking of before. So uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a positive reason to be on social media. Yeah, And it's, it's really been great to see the role that music has played and social media has played in our lives during this time, really connecting us and kind of closing that gap of that social distancing. Yeah, yeah. But, well, um, Sandy, I, I don't know if we have time for one more question. We're, we're just getting now to the very end of the hour. Is there, can we slip in one more question, do you think? Let's see if we could get one more question. Um, let me take a look. I'd love to, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. let me see here. Um, if you had one message to give your fans, those listening right now, what would that be? Wow. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. Chris. Hold on. Over to you. I got a stretch for that one. That <laughs> no, that's so hard because, I mean, I think the biggest message and the whole point around all of this is generosity. I mean, as soon as you open a mic, as soon as you start talking, it's all about sharing. It, that's what it all comes down to. You just really want people to know Beethoven's seventh or, or, or Schubert's ninth and, and, or, or the Goldberg variations. And, and um, my message to everyone is share, 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 mm -hmm. share, share, you know, sit down with somebody and say, look, I remember when I got to the New England Conservatory of my friend Ed, he sat me down and he had me listen to the Talus fantasy. I had never heard it before. He said, sit down, I'm turning out the lights. I thought, oh my God, where am I? <laughs> and and he, he played that for me and I will never forget it ever. That, that's the best way, but share, share, that, that's my message. Yeah, and, I, I think it's, it's a, it's a, um... I don't have a message. I know that it's an incredible privilege to be able to be doing this and to be doing something that is vaguely normal uh, during a time that hasn't been terribly normal. Um, and to be able to share music and be consistently here in studio with added protocols, you know, notwithstanding to be able to say, you know, hey, here's so and so listening in Maryland, or so and so listening uh, in JP, and they liked this, and 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 to connect with people and to be able to bring some sort of normalcy uh, to your lives when when there hasn't been all of that has been a has been a real a real privilege. So, um, thank you for still being here and and for listening and 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 letting us letting us do that because it's 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 awesome. It really That's is. That's right. Our thanks are huge, huge. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's a great honor. And I, I'm going to I'm going to now turn this way because I've got two minutes for my next. Break. Sure, turn your back on okay, us. Okay, Chris, do your job. <laughs> you have eyes on the back of your head on that yeah, countdown okay. clock. <laughs> got a feel for what 20 minutes feels like. But well, uh, it's been wonderful, and I, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thanks so much, everyone, for for being here. And awesome. uh, thank you, everyone, for sharing. Um, speaking of sharing, Kathy, so we appreciate. Um, Thank you so much for this last moment. I want to thank you again to my colleagues, Chris Voss, Kathy Fuller, Brian McCreeth for spending part of your work day <laughs> with us. And we appreciate your time and talents. And we are so fortunate to be able to spend this hour together and learning from all of you and your roles at CRB. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely a pleasure. And thank you to all of you at home for tuning in. And as a reminder, you can hear Kathy Fuller weekdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m on CRB Classical 99.5. And Chris Voss is CRB's featured drive time host today and every weekday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you can actually tune into him now after this. And of course, tune into Brian McCreeth on CRB for the Bach Hour Sundays from 6 to 7 a.m. and Mondays from midnight to 2 a.m. We appreciate so many of our leadership circle and major donors uh, joining us this afternoon. This concludes the first Leadership Circle behind the scenes virtual event for this new year. 
and a few more behind the scene experiences are in the works for the spring. So I will be sending you additional Leadership Circle invitations in upcoming e-newsletters. So keep an eye out for more details to come. And before you depart our virtual event, we'd appreciate your feedback. You'll see a survey pop up on your screen and we'd be ever so grateful for your input. And as always, you can stay informed about all of our upcoming events by visiting online at gbh.org slash events. Thank you again for your continued support of GBH and CRB Classical 99.5 and for your Leadership Circle partnership. Your contributions are so appreciated and make the work we do here at the foundation possible. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Stay safe and have a great evening.